we're here in the presence of the world's most accurate thermometer. The most accurate thermometer that has ever been built in all of history and something of which I'm enormously proud. So the question we want to answer is, how do you know what the temperature is? Lots of people want to know the answer to that question for all kinds of reasons, from meteorologists who want to know about the weather, to doctors who want to know about your health, to people making new materials. Thousands and thousands of reasons, but they all want to know what the temperature is and they all want to know that they've got the right temperature. So, obviously, they use a thermometer, like this one. So, uh, this thermometer tells me the temperature is about 24 degrees. Uh, that's the temperature at the tip here, and I can put it in my mouth. Temperature goes up. So it's clearly reading the temperature, but how do we know it's reading the right temperature? Well, the answer is simple. You have it compared with a better thermometer, a more accurate thermometer, in a process known as calibration. So it's taken to a laboratory that has a more accurate thermometer, and they compare it with their thermometer and tell you whether yours one is right. How do they know that their thermometer is right? Well, they know that because they compare it with our thermometers. But how do we know that our thermometer is right? At some point, you need a backstop, some basic standard against which you can compare the temperature. And that's what we have here at the National Physical Laboratory. Inside this insulated container are cells, glass containers uh, containing water held at the temperature of the triple point of water. You can see here's ice, so around here is about zero degrees Celsius. Inside here, it's a little bit hotter. This is a triple point of water cell, and it contains liquid water. Around the core of it, you should be able to see some ice, that's solid water. And up at the top here is water vapor, all three phases of water substance. And the temperature just at this point where the three phases, the vapour, the liquid and the solid coexist, is called the triple point. And it's a unique temperature, it's, a, it's 0 0.01 degrees Celsius exactly. Now it might have struck you that that triple point of water cell looks a little old-fashioned, a little Victorian. And it might seem a little bit odd that that particular point in the triple point of water cell should be the world's standard of temperature. It strikes scientists that way too and that's why we're trying to create something a little bit more fundamental. What we want to do is find out how fast molecules are moving at the temperature of the triple point of water. We want to work out how much each molecule has at that temperature and then we want to use the energy of the molecules as a standard and that way temperature will be related directly to the energy of molecules inside materials. So this beautiful object here, the MPL Cranfield Resonator, is what we use to measure the speed of sound with unparalleled precision. So how do we measure the speed of sound inside the resonator? Well, what we do is uh, there are little plugs with uh, microphones and a plug with a loudspeaker they're down here uh, and they excite sound waves inside the resonator. Now I don't want to touch the resonator itself because it's so precious but I've got a replica here uh, made of plastic. Uh, you can see inside it's uh, a spherical shape and the plugs look like this. Now what we do is change the frequency of sound that we excite from the loudspeaker and we find the frequency uh, such that the wavelength just matches the diameter of the resonator. And when that happens, the, uh, the sound begins to bounce backwards and forwards inside the resonator, and the amplitude of the sound, the loudness of it, gets bigger and bigger, louder and louder, and we can detect the point at which we get ex the exact matching of the wavelength and the diameter of the resonator. And then we can find out the exact frequency and wavelength that makes that maximum. And that, those two together, the frequency and the wavelength, tell us the speed of sound. So now we can measure the speed of sound in argon gas at the temperature of the triple point of water. 
And from the speed of sound, we can work out the speed of molecules. We know that it's ultra pure argon gas in there, so we know the mass of the molecules. And from the mass of the molecules and their speed, we can work out their kinetic energy. And that's the fundamental thing to which temperature is related. So now we have a way at the temperature of the triple point of water of working out exactly how much energy each molecule of argon has on average inside our resonator. And it's this that we want to make a new standard for temperature measurement. The number of joules of energy that each molecule has at a particular temperature. We think this is much more universal than the particular level of molecular jiggling at, a, at one point inside a glass cell. So we sum up this result in, in what's called the Boltzmann constant. It tells you the number of joules of energy that each molecule possesses when it's at a particular temperature. It's the number of joules per degree.